Hi there everyone, it's Misty here from The Joy of It Off. Happy Monday, welcome to another week of cards. Thank you so much for joining me today. So in today's video, I am gonna show you how to make this card. I watercolored this card using the Inktense um, pencil, so I'm gonna walk you through how I made this. The theme for this month for Anthony's design team are using these single flowers. So these tulips are a single small stamp, and he has, I don't know, half a dozen, maybe even 10. Um, I know he has gladiolas and irises and lilies and these tulips, morning glories, dandelions, not dandelions, daffodils. Um, so anyway, <laughs> he also launched his updated website on March the 3rd. So if you haven't checked it out, I will have that link down below along with a link to this tulip stamp and then the sentiment stamp I used for the whisk. Um, with sympathy. So let's head over to my craft table and I will show you how I made today's card. Before we get into today's video, I just wanted to let you know that I am having a card sale over my Etsy shop. You will find that link down below. Um, international shoppers, if you'd like cards, just message me and we'll get you a um, custom listing so you pay exact shipping. So we're going to be doing some watercoloring today and some masking. So I'm gonna link the watercolor paper that I'm using down below. I know a lot of people use the one from Tim Holtz. It's the Distressed Ink Water Paper. That water paper is awful. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. If you're someone who does a light layer of water and you don't wanna add a lot of different colors or use a bunch of water, then it's okay. But for the most part, it peels really, really badly, especially if you are someone who uses a lot of water, etc. So I, this is a Strathmore watercolor paper. It comes in five by seven sheets, I think. I got it on Amazon, and again, I will link this in the description box down below. Um, for this technique and for this medium, you're gonna want, um, you're gonna want some better watercolor paper, and this isn't very expensive either. So for masking, when we're masking with um, just regular masking when I'm regular stamping, we use ink Eclipse masking tape. So this is called drawing gum. You can also, it's also called like liquid frisket. It's basically a like a glue type substance that you put over your images to protect it from the pigments and the water. So, um, again, it's like li liquid frisket or drawing gum. So I shook mine up and, and at first I didn't shake it up and it didn't do a very good job. So, um, you're going to want to use a paintbrush that you, um, aren't going to mind getting ruined because this, this definitely will, even if you do clean it up and basically you just paint on the drawing gum or the liquid frisket and you let it dry and here you can see that it dried to a deeper color um i did have some inconsistencies with um how much i put on so later you'll see that um some of mine came off it was an easy fix but if you're using the light colors you may want to make sure that your your level is even okay so these are Derwent Ink Tense Pencils. If you've never heard of them, they are watercolor pencils and they are called Ink Tense because it's, they're, they look like ink. They look like you stamped or colored with an ink rather than a watercolor pencil. So how these are different is that the drier your, like the drier your brush, the darker and the more rich the color is going to be. So I wanted to do a sunset gradient. So I have orange to pink to purple to a navy blue kind of black color. You saw me swatching them just a second ago. So this is going to be a lot of back and forth. It took me a while to get the blend that I wanted. But again, when see how see how beautiful that is. <laughs> See how beautiful and just how vibrant those watercolors are. And again, if I had done this with a bit of a drier brush, it would have been even more vibrant and you'll see that a little bit later. So these are unlike any other watercolor medium that you've used before. I think I have the 12 pack. Um, I asked for these for Christmas eons ago. 
and they are just so pretty. If you're someone who enjoys coloring or just watercoloring, I would really suggest these. So watercoloring, there are lots of mediums. There are, um, see there, you can see where the drawing gum um, had too much of a layer and it came off because it wasn't dry all the way. You have to let this dry all the way. And I'm going over it with a heat tool so I can add more water and more layers. So you've got watercolor pencils, there are watercolor pens, there are wa liquid watercolors, you've got the pan watercolors, which are more like traditional watercolors. So there are a lot of different options when it comes to um, a watercolor medium. And these, I don't, I honestly don't know how much they are because I've probably had these eight or nine years and I just don't use them often enough as I should. So you can add as much or as little water, like I said, as you want to create them you know, create the vibrancy and the um, saturation that you want. So I'm just going to keep working on adding water, making sure that I'm blending. Um, again, I would really highly suggest if watercoloring is something that you want to do, that you invest in some better paper than the Distress. I think for Distress inks, it's probably an okay color, like an okay paper, but for adding more water, it's, it just peels. It peels so quickly, and I, I just, ugh, it's so frustrating. It's really frustrating. Ask me how I know. Ask me how I know. So, like I said, in between later layers, I'm going to be um, using my heat tool to dry it. You don't have to do this with a heat tool. Um, I just wanted to make sure I got this video filmed, and I didn't want to have to go wait you know, hours in between um, doing that. So once you're done, this comes off kind of like glue. Um, and you just have to kind of start peeling it or here you're gonna see me bring in an eraser. This is just a, gum, I think they're called gum erasers. Um, I have them for my colored pencils. And it just peels right off. And then you can see there kind of like the magic of what Eclipse masking paper is. This um, drawing gum or again, liquid frisket is just really really amazing and again you want to make sure that you get it in a you know an even layer and you want to make sure that you're not uh, and you let it dry all the way okay so for the flowers i'm going to start with my darkest color where i want there to be more shadow in the red one it doesn't really like in the actual like petals of the tulips it doesn't really come across like that because i end up adding a ton of color to this and you can see it a little bit better in uh, the leaves and the stems. So I used a big watercolor brush for the um, background, but here I am using a aqua painter. Um, I don't have any water in it because I want to be able to control the water. And this one, the water leaks out. So I'm basically, the barrel is empty. If you don't know what an aqua painter is, it's basically a pen, a watercolor, like, pen where you can keep the water inside the pen and then use that to watercolor instead of having to have you know a separate I have a coffee cup full of water but again um to me I don't have as much control when the water links out so here's another thing that you can do with these pencils is you can take the water directly to the pencil and again it look how vibrant this red is oh my gosh these are just so good so I encourage you, you know, if you have some and you haven't played with them in a while, bring them out, um, et cetera. But again, you know, you can go pencil to um, watercolor pen, blah, 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 aqua painter, to directly to the pencil, directly to the paper, or um, you can wet the paper just slightly and color over it with the pencils. So at least that's what I do if you've you know if you've learned differently or if you think it's different that's completely up to you but this is how I do it um, this is how I get the vibrancy I want and um, I just really really love it so I'm gonna go ahead and turn on some music and let you guys watch me color and then once we're done with this part um, I'll walk you through the rest
So I have this Spectrum Noir um, shimmer pen that is basically empty. So what I've done is I've re removed the stopper and I've brought in a pipette, right? Yeah, something, whatever it's called. <laughs> and I filled it with water. And the reason why I'm doing that is because there's still plenty of glitter and shimmer inside this pen. It just ran out of the solution. So I'm gonna add some water and I'm gonna keep adding water until it's full. And then you'll see that we'll end up getting some shimmery water out of this pen once it gets filled up, filled up. You can do this with a wink of Stella. You can do this, you know, with any kind of shimmer pen that you have. Um, and the reason why I did this is because I just wanted to add a little bit of shimmer in the background. Um, I didn't wanna like take the risk of putting down, you know, white specks for stars or whatever. Um, so I went ahead and did this instead and I'm going to bring in my flashlight. I've slowed this down to normal speed instead of 400 times and you can just see that little bit of sparkle that it gives. Um, I really, really love it. So I'm using my heat tool again to dry it and then I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. So I didn't want, I wanted a I wanted a pattern paper behind it, but I didn't want something that was like bam in your face. So I have this pattern of, from Bow Bunny. This is, I believe, a wedding um, piece of pa um, pattern paper that they had. Initially, I thought about the stripes, but then I found this, this writing. And I thought, okay, that would be perfect because only a little bit of it's going to be showing. And yeah, so I'm going to cut that down. And then this is just a black marker. You guys have seen me do this when I um, color and cut out um, Copic images, but you can do the same thing with this. And that's because I didn't want the white core of the paper to be so noticeable because it's going to go on a black background. So this is a Macron pigment pen. It's basically um, an archival pen. So I lost a lot of my lines from the stamps using those um, colors because it's such a strong pigment. So I just brought in two of these markers that are very fine tipped and I'm going over the lines from the stamp. And that just brings in a bit more, again, of the structure and the lines and you can actually see what it is rather than just a couple of blobs. So I'm gonna use a piece of black, like I mentioned, um, to be an eighth of an inch of a border. And we'll go ahead and get that adhered with um, tearing tape, score tape, whatever you want to call it. Um, since this was wet and it's not necessarily flat as much as it should be or would be if it was just a regular sheet of paper, I am using um, a really strong tape. Now, the one thing to note about this is that <laughs> um, this ain't coming off unless you ruin the whole thing. So make sure you are where you need to be um, because this is a very, very, very strong adhesive. So I'm just burnishing the back of that adhesive with my bone folder so the release tape will come off a little bit easier. And then again, I'm gonna make sure there's just about an eighth of an inch of a border and I'm gonna trim the rest of that off with my um, trimmer. Then I adhered that to the white pattern paper and then this is a card base. This is black that I scored or cut at five and a half by eight and a half. I've scored at four and a quarter. And then I'm gonna add this with just some regular um, adhesive. So you can see there, you can just barely see the writing, but it's there. So I'm bringing in the Sympathy Set 1 from Anthony's Paper Craft, and I'm gonna um, emboss words. <laughs> I'm going to emboss with our sympathy on a piece of black. So I'm going to bring an anti-static tool. You can use baby powder. You can use cornstarch. Um, you can use, oh, there's me. You can use an old <laughs> dryer sheet and whatever you need to do to remove the static. And then I'm going to go ahead and stamp the image, or excuse me, stamp the sentiment with first mark and bring in some silver embossing powder. So you'll see that I don't have nails. Um, I've been wearing layover, like I've been putting on fake nails for the past six or eight months. And the issue with that is it's ruining the nails underneath. So I used to have long nails, like last year, the year before, all of my videos with long nails were my real nails, but um, I got back into the habit of biting them. So yeah, anyway, that's an aside. So I'm trying to let them grow out. So it'll be a month or two before my nails are pretty, but we'll get there. 
So once I get that melted, I'm going to cut it down and then I'm going to adhere this with some dimensional adhesive. These are just pop dots or these are actually the ones from um, Stampin' Up. So your question of the day is which floral stamp do you like best from Anthony's Paper Crafts? I will have a link to this one down below. So make sure you go take a look, come back and leave me a comment and the winner will win this card. I will be drawing winners at the end of the month for all of March's questions of the day. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you and I'll see you on Wednesday for another card. You're gonna get three cards this week and three cards next week. Make sure you're subscribed so you get notified because I'm playing around with um, upload times. And yeah, thanks guys. I love you so much. I'll see you real soon. Bye for now.